right, you guys, we are live in effect. This is the Locker Room Show. We are excited to come to you guys like we do every Thursday. This is where we go behind the locker room doors. We share the truth about what's going on in the football entertainment industry. This is the stuff that pertains to you young football players, you parents, you coaches out there that are trying to get after it. So we've got a great show lined up for you. You guys already see who's on the screen. So I'm going to do my formal introduction, but we're coming hard tonight and I'm excited about the show. So first and foremost, you see my trusted co-host. That is none other than Q, the guru to the far right. What's going on, Q? What's going on, Coach? What's going on, man? Let's get it get it locked in, man. We got another good one. You know what it is. <laughs> you already know what it is, and we got some top topics that you guys, hey, this is real time for you guys. And then in the middle of the screen, the gentleman is trying to drive as safe as he can. That is my boy, <laughs> none other than Tully Banta Kane. What's going on, player? Hey, what's going on, brother? Thanks for having me on, man. Hey, man, short notice. I know that you're hustling. I know you're doing things, so appreciate the time for real, man. Sure. You got it, man. I just got to keep All my right. eyes on the road. There you <laughs> go. There you go. We, we see you. You look at the road, Please, and we'll, we'll look at you. I see Andy Peak joining us. That is my former teammate from the University of Colorado. What's going on, Peak, all the way from New York doing his thing? And then, of course, the great Munoz family coming from Texas. We see y'all. We love y'all. Hopefully all as well with the Munoz family. So, hey, we're starting a little bit later, you guys. Let's get right into it. We obviously got big time things to talk about. Um, first and foremost, we're coming up with uh, Big Cooper Cup getting the bag. And uh, I mean, wow, can you have any more of an amazing year? Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl champion, uh, pro bowler, I think uh, all uh, all pro, 110 million over five years, you guys, the highest paid ever, ever wide receiver in the game. And uh, Q, we'll start off with you, man. What's your thoughts when you see Young Cup getting his money like that? I mean, I, I like Cooper Cup. I think he's a solid receiver. Um, I think he's going to do great things for, you know, over time. But the amount of money that he got, I don't feel like he's been doing it long enough. Okay. That's my that's my thing. He he I mean he's a, he's a hell of a wide receiver. He's putting up the numbers. Uh you know, man has, you know, little to no drops. Obviously, he's got a great trigger man in Matt Stafford, but as a GM or a coach, you're going to have to show me a, you want to you have to show me over time a little bit longer than he has to cut that kind of check. But more power to him. Uh, he got that bag, and, and let's see uh, how he does. You know this upcoming season. No doubt. And uh, Tully, I mean, you've been in some negotiation uh, rooms and and uh, had to get your bread. What do you think about Cooper Cup? Do you, or better yet, let me ask you, man, what's the thought process of a coach and a GM right. as far as giving a guy this much money? Well, um, you know, the one thing about the NFL is these contracts, you know, you got to kind of read through them uh, and not get overly uh, shocked with the numbers because every every NFL player knows that you're really on a one-year contract anyway. Every year, um, you know, you, it, you, you're you risk, risking injury. So it, it says 100 and whatever, 10 million on paper, but he got to play all five years at a, at all five seasons to even see all that money. Plus, we don't know if there's incentives, if there's playing time, or, you know, we don't know. I think they I said 75 guaranteed. And then even that, when the, even the word guarantee, it really doesn't, unless it's the signing bonus. Right. The guarantee means what you're getting over the first two years. Right. So you're really not guaranteed. Like I signed a contract, my second contract with New England, um, and it said I was guaranteed a certain amount of money, but I only got well, only thing that was guaranteed was my signing bonus and my salary for that year. And then right. the second year, they could restructure you, they could cut you. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's not really you know you you don't really get all that money unless you get it in a in the form of a signing bonus. Yeah, but I think it, for, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say for coaches, like thought process, they, I think, are a lot of times looking at, you know, for Cooper Cup, I mean, he's he's probably not in his prime, but I would say he's probably had maybe one or two more years like he had last season in him. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why he may be worth that amount of money for the first two years of the deal because they're thinking we're not going to probably cut him. And then they also got to look at what other – I mean, didn't they just sign Aaron Donald – to like a quarterback yeah. number type of deal too. Yeah, was sick. So I, I don't oh, know where they get all this money from. <laughs> it's LA. <laughs> it's LA though. It's LA. Well, well I mean, like I'm you said, they're probably. I'm, I'm thinking about lacing up again. Man, I'm <laughs> telling you. Man. They're, they're probably thinking about a, a two-year window, like you said, but that's big-time uh, information right there. Thank you for sharing that with us. And we are on to our next topic, you guys, and this is a big one. This is a big one because, obviously, a lot of you young superstars are going to want to have somebody by your side. You're going to want to have some companionship. And, um, unfortunately, this is uh, on the basketball side of things, but it pertains to you young football players, too. Uh, Bronny James got a little heat for who he chose to go to uh, the prom with because the color of her skin, I guess we still haven't evolved uh, past that. But this is a good point, you guys, because um, sometimes our loved ones are in the crossfire, too, when it comes to uh, athletes, especially in today's time, social media. Um, I know Sierra has recently been talked about. Uh, Russell Wilson's wife. So um, talk to me a little bit, Tully, as far as this particular situation, do you think oh, yeah. LeBron, who's very forward thinking, might have tipped his son off like, hey, you might face a little backlash for who you date? Or do you think it's, uh, you know, hey, let my son go out there and find out for himself? Oh, I mean, it's, it's tough. I think it could be a little bit of both. Um, you know, he's already a public figure just because of who his dad is. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if they live in Ohio or maybe L.A., but um, LA. it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, he's catching heat just based on the color of the, of the young lady's skin. Um, that because he's black and he's maybe supposed to be with a, with a, a, a sister or somebody of color. So, I mean. I don't know. I mean, these kids nowadays, they're definitely, I think, more open minded and forward thinking in general. Anyways, I mean, look at what happened with Dwayne Wade and his son. Right. And, and, yeah. and all the, uh, you know, the different things that happen. So I, I just think, you know, as a parent, you, you got to let your, your kids, um, you know, be what they want to be. Uh, and but at least give them the proper guidance and at least let them know what, how how things could um, escalate. No, that's great feedback right there. And uh, Q, I mean, uh, you know, unfortunately, this young man's being judged a little bit by who he's dating. I don't even know if this is a serious girlfriend, but as far as players, I don't know if you've ever went through situation on a smaller level like that. But um, is it important for these athletes to really evaluate if who they're dating can handle being in a, a with a social figure? I mean, no, I, yeah, I can definitely agree because a lot comes with that. You know, like he was saying, it, it's, it's, you know, obviously who is dad, you know, to uh, most, uh, you know, is a, is an icon, um, you know, as far as athletes go. So yeah, he's always going to have the spotlight on him. And I'm sure that LeBron has explained that to him, you know, and uh, the rest of his children as well, but still all in all, he's a kid, you know, he's a teenage kid. That's who we chose to take the prom, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, let him let, let him be great, man. Let him live his life. Uh, you know, you, you again, you teach your kids what you can and you have to let them experience things on their own, you know, and they will. Uh, if, if you bring your kids up right, they'll, they'll find their way. Speaking of experiencing things on their own, we got the great Eric Foss with us from Alabama and uh, Tully. He's got two Division One level quarterbacks coming out of his home. So they've definitely uh, experienced things on their own too. So, hey, thank you for joining us, you guys. False family, love you. And we're on to our next topic, you guys. If you're joining us for the very first time, we hit it fast, we hit it hard. This one was the one that caught my attention real quick, you guys. Um, a matter of fact, I haven't seen a, a, a title or a headline like this for an active coach 
I know we saw some crazy things with Sandusky and, and stuff, but uh, we have a young man here. I, I Looks like Idaho State assistant football coach Devontae Neal charged with first-degree murder um, in Arizona. And, uh, you know, that's critical right there. This is an active coach, you guys. Q, um, talk to me a little bit about the process of hiring some of these dudes. You know, we're all human beings and we got baggage just like the next person. Um, do you think that college coaches, pro coaches are vetted enough from the mental health standpoint? No, that's, I mean, shoot, coach, that's a great, that's a great question. I mean, I think everyone needs to kind of be evaluated, you know, um, and definitely as far as coaching, because you're dealing with young men, you're dealing with, uh, with, with these, these young men's futures, you know, so that's absolutely imperative that, you know, to me, you have some type of mental health. Um, but you never know, like you say, you never know what people have going on behind closed doors. Could have, you know, could be a great coach. You know, deal, you know, really deal with his players, have a great connection with them and still have something going on personally. Everyone makes mistakes and he just made a bad decision. Unfortunately, his in his position, you're there to not just great, make great football players. You're there to try to teach these young men not to make those type of decisions that he just made. You know, they stay out that orange jumpsuit and flip flops. So, Boy. I mean, it, it's just uh, man, it's unfortunate, man. It really is. Man, I couldn't picture uh, going to see Coach, you know, locked up. Uh, talk to me a little bit, Tully, as far as uh, you're a father, man, and I know your boy got some size on him. He may be coming through somebody's A-gap one day. Uh, what are you looking at from a coaching standpoint, man, when somebody comes and, and maybe sits down in your home to recruit your son? Yeah, um, I mean, it's really like like you said, I mean, there's only so much you can really get to know about somebody. Um, usually you just you hardly even scratch the surface on what kind of character uh, that they really got going on. But you would think that, you know, if you could see um, where they've been before and you talk to their acquaintances, other coaches, um, their track record usually can speak for itself, uh, especially if they've, they've had success with other young athletes. Um, and, and so this situation in general is just, you know, really unfortunate and it could happen to anybody. I guess, you know, like you said, we're all human and anybody can have a bad day and make a mistake. But, you know, in this type of arena, these, these are the mistakes you definitely don't want to see happening. No, that's that's real talk right there. And, uh, you know, me, I don't go ahead. I was about you, to say, Coach, you got to look you got to look at it like this. Look at Penn State. I'm sure a lot of people on that staff, everybody look good on the surface. You see how that panned out. So you, you just yeah. you can't tell. Yeah. You literally can't. You just never know. Everyone has personal lives. And, and for you athletes that are in the process of making decisions, a lot of you guys at camps, a lot of you guys listening to uh, the, the sales pitch from some of these coaches, uh, trust your intuitions, man. Trust mm -hmm. the people that are already being coached by those uh, uh, people. But in some cases, you never know. Like you well, said, a, and, and like, yeah, go ahead. And real quick, that's beautiful that they have the transfer portal now because I yeah. think for, yeah. for, for kids, you know, if they, some kids are afraid to speak up or do something because it could cost them, um, you know, their playing time mm -hmm. or their yep. career in general. So now that, hey, if you see something going on with a coach, you don't got to sit by and let it and let it slide. You can you can get up out of there. No, that's a great point right there. So, hey, you guys be mindful. Uh, you know, not all these coaches are uh, created equal out Thanks. there. Uh, we on to our next topic, you guys, and we're pumped up because tonight, once again, we're bringing you people in the industry and we're giving you firsthand live uh, accounts of stories and things that they go through tips, advice, the whole nine. So we have Tully Bantacane, two-time Super Bowl champ with us. He's in the middle looking a little dark because he's on the road, but you guys can hear the advice and you guys know what time it is. So this one is for you, Tully. Uh, you know, right now, man, the NIL is big. And, uh, you know, back in the day when you were a Cal, Bay Area native, Bay boy like me, uh, you would have been able to be approached by local businesses, man, that want to do commerce, that want to do business with you. And, um, you know, you didn't experience that type of opportunity until you got into the NFL. 
uh, right here, here's a perfect article. It says, Telly Banta Kane won't be changed by he hefty pay raise. Um, you know, but talk to me about being 17, 18 years old. Do you think you would have been ready to uh, have more money in your pocket? Oh, I mean, personally, I, I, I want to say yes, but knowing the kind of kid I was, um, you know, you have to have a good uh, support system that can help you manage uh, having that type of money. Um, yeah. But not to say that it's it, it's not deserved, um, nor can it be managed, but it's just as long as it doesn't, um, I think, mentally inflate your ego or, or make you less hungry to be uh, be the player you want to be, I, I think it's a great thing for these young guys. And, you know, as long as, like I said, you have a good support system with your parents and your peers um, to, you know, uh, get, get you the right financial assistance so that you're not just spending the money on stupid things and you're actually using that money um, to, to better your, your experience as, a, as an athlete and a, and a student, um, you know, whether it's like getting, you know, a nice place near campus so that you can study um, and, and be on time for meetings and things like that, and classes, um, transportation, you know, getting good meals in you so you're not just eating pizza and, and drinking beer all night. I think, you know, those are the things where a young player, you know, there's a lot of temptation. And so... Just having a good circle around you um, to make sure that you're wise with your money. Now that's facts right yeah. there. And, and yeah. Q, um, talk to me a little bit, man. Is there any way we could prep these kids? I mean, you're a father too. Uh, this is even for the young ladies too, man. Yeah. Um, some of these kids are driving Bentleys now. Man, is there Bentleys. Bentley, hey, hey, listen, coach. I was just reading an article actually earlier today. What is it, Quinn Ewers? The man has an Aston Martin, man, wow. down in Texas. Jesus. Yeah, he's riding James Bond. Can, hey, yeah, look, he, it, look, Coach, and it came complete with the theme music. And, oh, and I mean, oh. I mean, what does the teacher tell him? What does the, the assistant DB coach Nothing. or the, the QB coach tell him? Nothing. I mean, you know, how do you prep these young men? So is this kind of a just – we gonna have some kids fall by the wayside, and then they're gonna be more prepared as they get older. Or is there a way to prep these young men, Q? I mean, no, it's a it's a way to prep them, but it's gonna it's gonna have to be to me. I don't know if the university is gonna be, but it's gonna have to be some companies that are gonna have to start to develop outside the parameters of the university. Because the university, let's be honest, not times like that, that is gonna be about you know the kids and money and bringing more people in. And it's, you know, it's this big, you know, circular motion of just, you know, just money, money and more money. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it, it's like you said, because it's hard to tell a kid. Are you 18 right in the Aston Martin, 18, 19 years hey, man. old? Said, it was hard to tell me. Car. I was eating you know? ramen. It was hard to tell me something. So uh, don't, you know, don't so let me is, out, no. The game has changed, man. Game is yeah, these kids need way more guidance, and they needed they needed much earlier in, in their life and in their career, man. Much earlier. Yeah. Young Jimmy Rucker with us. He Big says, Jimmy. Little, Jimmy, little Jimmy gonna have more in his pocket at seventeen than he right. got. Uh, so right there, and then and then Phil Foss, Eric Foss says financial management and risk classes are a must, and that's definitely fact. Facts. So you guys, Facts. we're breezing through this thing, but we're talking about real topics. Some of you guys are going to have a chance to make money, partner with businesses, start your own businesses. You got to get gamed up. Parents get these kids gamed up. We're on to our next chapter, you guys, our next uh, section, and that is football camp success tips football camp success tips Q. these kids are in the competition battles right now today's Big thursday time. there's there's camps this weekend man kids trying to get to the bag trying to get that first scholarly or multiple scholars wish you well, give me a couple tips man for the young ones listen top of the list make plays Make plays. Constantly be getting better, guys. You know the rules and regulations of this sport. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. So go out there, make plays. Second thing is do your best to stay healthy, okay? okay. And then also as well, 
try to establish a connection with the coaches that are attending these camps. Ask questions. That's what they're there for. Ask them what are they looking for at your particular position, you know, yeah. so that way you get better. Always ask questions. Don't be scared of that. But definitely that's my top three tips for sure. Big Tully, uh, did you go to any camps, man? I know you signed with Cal. Obviously, you stayed home. But did you go to any camps coming out of Fremont? No, nah, not really, man. I, I went to uh, I went to a couple football camps um, in high school just to go and get like skill kick, uh, training camps. Um, I went to an Eddie Taylor, uh, Jerry Rice camp, um, but it wasn't it wasn't really a big um, you know showcase type of thing for the coaches. But I did play in a Charlie Wiedemeyer All Star game and things like that. But I will still give the advice if you are doing a camp, you know. Um, and just like what Q said, you know, make plays, but also do the, the other intangible things where, you know, hustle, uh, hustle plays are just as good as making big plays. So that, that means like, hey, the, the running back, he might get tagged um, and he's still <laughs> running. You know what I'm doing? I'm trying to get that ball out. I'm trying to I'm chasing him yep. all the way down the field. I don't care. Even the whistle's blown. I'm still chasing him, breathing down his neck. So just doing little things like that to show the coaches that you a dog, you got a motor. That's what they really want to see is, is who's going to get after it and do the little things. Um, nice. And especially uh, make sure that you got your assignment sound. You know, don't be out there making, you know, make sure you know what you're doing. Get the call. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're communicating. And that's a, another thing that the coaches want to see is that you communicate and you can, you can uh, take the mental part of the game on and not, not be that bus guy. Absolutely. I love that. I love that, that's man. Good. And that's really kind of what a lot of your career was based off of, those extra effort plays, man. And it got you a couple Super Super Bowl rings. So that's big time right there. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, I am your host, Coach Terrence Wood. We are in the locker room where we bring the truth, where we bring the topics that pertain to the young players, the athletes that are going through it. I got Q the Guru with me, two-time Super Bowl champ, Telly Banta Kane, amazing player also in college at Cal Berkeley. And we're almost done, Telly. I appreciate the time, man. As you guys can see, he's a little bit darker. He's in the ride. He's in the vehicle. But getting he's giving you – he's it getting it done. done. He's giving you that effort. <laughs> get he's more talking live about. Than that. So <laughs> we're about to have – our first lightning round in the dark with Telly Banta Kane. And uh, this is going to be a good one now, Telly. This is your first time, man, in, uh, in the locker room. And to a certain extent, I know we didn't get a chance to really talk about it, but the lightning round is where it goes down. This is the, the, the portion of the show that people really enjoy. It's our version of a little bit of word of association where uh, we get to hear What's on Telly Banta Kane's mind, y'all? We get to hear what's on his mind. So I'm going to say something. It may be a word. It may be a question. It may be pertaining to a player. Um, and then he gets to say the first thing on his mind. He's got 60 seconds to get through as many as he can. And, and there's a, a reward for whoever gets through the most. So before the kickoff of the first college game on ESPN, we will be announcing our winner. As of right now, it's Kansas Jayhawks' own Damon Patterson. And uh, he got 12, Tully, which is flying, flying. So you got 60 seconds, and uh, you're going to have to get through as many as you can. Now, I got my stopwatch right ready for you. You ready to go, big dog? I'm ready. All go. right, Ready. first thing on your mind, and uh, and this is a Cal Bear, you guys. It ain't easy to get in Cal Berkeley, so we dealing with somebody that got some grades. So he <laughs> might catch, he might catch the Kansas Jayhawk. I don't know, but we about to see. So I got my stopwatch. I'm not cheating you. It's on zero, and we about to get started. All right, number one, Tully. First thing on your mind, brother. Uh, Steve Mariucci, go. Great head coach. Great player. The Pac-12. The Pac oh, should still be the Pac-10. <laughs> the best running back you've ever played against. Uh, Edron James. 
The most memorable play from college. Um, uh, uh, my thirteenth sack against Stanford. Apple pie or peach cobbler? Mm, yeah, apple thirty-four pie. seconds. Roller coaster or Ferris wheel? Roller coaster. Michael Vick. Uh, best quarterback scrambler the league's ever seen. Fifty seconds. Enchiladas or burritos? Burritos. Best fans in the NFL? New England. Hot air balloon or hot ah, time? Time. So let's see what the great Tully Banter King got. So, and we're going to go over a couple of these answers too, as got we to. always do. Definitely. So uh, we got Mariucci. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. He got to nine, so he's in your range. Now, I threw in one that was a little tough, and I never threw in the most memorable uh, uh, play. So, that you know, that's going yeah. yeah, to trip like, some, so you know, because, yeah, you, that's going to yeah. trip some fellas up, man. Good. But uh, good job, man. So talk to me a little bit. He said he went with the apple pie over the cobbler. I got you on that. I'm with you on that. And then he said, uh, Edron James, huh? Edrin James was a problem, man. He that dude could do it all, man. He he ran hard and he and he can catch the ball at the back for you if you had to cover him. So uh yeah, he's one of the best. Talk to me a little bit. Didn't you play uh a little bit with the Niners and Frank Gore? Yep. That's my guy. What's uh what, what's your opinions on Frank? I mean, I know obviously he uh he didn't have the college career that that he could have, but uh you think he's first ballot? Um, I think so. I mean, it sucks that he never got a ring, but I mean, short of a ring, a guy pretty much did everything you could do in the NFL. So, yeah. um, yeah, I would say first ballot. Yeah. Is there anything different, Tully? Cause I mean, man, come on with Tom Brady, guys like Frank, you, I mean, you played against some of the best that will ever go down in the game. Is there anything when you think of those guys that stands out more than, than others? Um, I would just say the work ethic, man. I mean, the, Tom has like, you know, exceptional work ethic. And that's what I think it's the same thing with Frank. That's what kept him in the game so long. Um, you know, I, I, I unfortunately, um, I retired after the lockout year. And I say a lot, a big part of that is because I didn't have um, the structure of, of a training program. And so when you got guys who, you know, you add a training program with work ethic, those are the guys that, that last the longest. Amazing, man. That's great feedback right there. And uh, I know you guys are getting a lot out of tonight's show, whether you're watching live or you're watching recorded. We thank you tremendously, Telly, for your time. Last section of the show, and that is the audience Q&A. Now, if you guys are live, you got a question, hurry up and fire it off. But I got one for you, and I'm definitely interested Telly, in your uh, opinion on this one, man, because like like I said, you did attend a university, a, a real higher uh, education at Cal Berkeley. I think it's the number one public university in the country. Um, talk to me a little bit, man, about today and whether the degree is bigger or the actual network is bigger. As you see yourself navigating things after football, do you see that you got more juice when you say, I went to Cal, got a degree? I don't know if you did or didn't, but let's say you did. And then, or you say, hey, uh, I'm picking up my phone and hitting the Cal database. Uh, which one's a little bit more valuable, you think, today for these kids? I think definitely the network. Um, you know, uh, I think it's not always what you know, it's who you know. And that's what I've learned is now you know, being able to say I graduated from Berkeley is definitely uh, an honor. And I think it does raise an eyebrow or two, but um, ultimately it comes down to the relationships you get while you're in college. And those are the people that when you're out of college or you're out, off into your after career life, uh, football life, um, those are the, those are the phone calls you're going to make is the people that you make uh, that you met along the way that could potentially help you out. Um, and not so much going in front of somebody and saying, hey, I, I graduated from Cal. 
That's big right there, man. And that's I why um, it's it's definitely so big agree. when you guys go beyond also like like Telly has. I know he started businesses and I know that Rolodex is ridiculous, man. So, hey, I know you're in the car, man. You want to get in the house. I thank you tremendously for joining us in the locker room tonight. Thanks for having me, man. You got a great thing going here. And, you know, good luck to all you youngsters out there watching this show. You know, keep keep your head on the, on the, on the swivel and keep your head on the straight and narrow. And you're going to be all right. Hey, one question from the Foss family. He said, who are the worst fans? I don't want to get you in trouble, Telly, but who are the worst fans in uh, in, in the NFL? I, I know I'd say. <laughs> well, sure. I'm going to say the same answer. The New England page. <laughs> we got the best and the worst. <laughs> See, I thought, he, I thought he would have said Philly. I heard, I heard Philly's fans are brutal, Philly man. Is brutal. But, hey, you know, Pittsburgh, they throw stuff at you on the way in. Facts. Facts. He said on the way in. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. They throw beer right, and hot dogs at the buses. Oh, yeah. It's ugly. Oh, that's wow. gangster. <laughs> yeah, that's, di that's different than the Pac-10. I know you were in the Pac-10, now Pac-12. There wasn't none of that going on. Oh, no, right. Fresno State, though. You ever play there? Woo! Them Bulldog fans. Don't, lose, don't lose a game there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. Well, hey, man, much love. Uh, shouts out to the family. Keep doing your thing, player. All right, Tully. Appreciate, appreciate it, you. man. Thank right, you. Yeah. All right, you guys. Right. So that is Tully Banta Kane, man. Good dude. Cares about student athletes. Jumped in the locker room late, Q, with us and, uh, and brought it. So, you know, obviously he was in the car, but hopefully you guys got a lot out of tonight's show. Q, anything on your mind? I mean, we covered a lot, dude. Cooper we did, Cup we did. getting his dough. Idaho State coach tripping. Anything uh, for the audience before we get out of here? You, you know what? No, just the same thing for the kids. You know, guys, it's, it's summertime. Coaching, I've said this before. Be careful. You know, uh, you know, joking around with your friends, hooping. We don't want any torn ACLs, PCLs, nobody drowning in the pool. Just be careful and stay healthy. You can have fun this summer. Definitely have fun, you know, you with the kids, your your athletes, be your kid. Um, but just be careful out there, you know. Make sure that you you get back to camp and get back to school safe to start another year and another season. That's a great point, man. And um, no, the off season, you guys, is where the social stuff. Um, guys fumble the rock off the field, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't want that to be any of you guys because you work so hard, you're doing your thing. And another thing that you need to do is definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're building this baby up. We want this to be communal. We want you guys to feel like this is yours. We want to educate. We want all of the athletes, parents, coaches that tune into the locker room show to be a great above a great above everybody else. So you guys do your part. Make sure you hit the button so the algorithms let you know when we're going live and so that you guys can definitely share with your friends, share with the family, and share with the coaches, man. So uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of tonight's show. Make sure that you hit us up on all of the social media platforms and definitely email us with any questions that you have because uh, we've really been in this life for a long time. We've been in this industry for a long time. So we want you guys to take advantage and pick our brains. So Q, signing off, baby. Great job. I'll see you next week. For sure. All right.